All right, I'd like to welcome you guys to this week's report. Got a lot of stuff to cover, but before I do, I want to talk a little bit about the weather. The good news for a change, it's going to be good everywhere. So uh, I don't see anywhere in Southern California you can't go fishing this weekend if you want to. Uh, as always, the Outer Islands may be a little bit more susceptible for, uh, to weather for smaller boats, but sport boats look like they have free range, as do most areas you want to go on your own boat. So uh, without wasting any more time, let's head to the map. All right, starting up the Channel Islands. Uh, they had another great week of fishing up there. Sea bass, halibut, cod, calico bass, a little bit of everything's biting. The uh, sea bass and halibut are still being caught on a variety of baits, squid, but also the, uh, the large fluke style baits. Um, and uh, that's just been consistently good here through this lunar cycle. And the good news about that is we have uh, the next full moon coming May 5th. So not this weekend, but the next weekend we should have another uh, Full moon days leading up to that might be a good opportunity to go up there and catch a sea bass if you want to. All really nice fish up there, and they're getting some really big halibut too. Um, cod's not getting a lot of credit up there, but it's good. The boats fishing along the coast are fishing deeper, taking advantage of some of that area that's been closed in the past. The guys fishing the islands are fishing a little shallower, catching good reds and a bunch of other junk up there, ling cod, you name it. But uh, yeah, just good steady fish up the Channel Islands um, and great weather. So if you want to get out there this weekend, it might be a good time to go. Uh, heading down to uh, San Nick and the Dirt Clod. Um, there hasn't been a lot of coverage at Nick due to weather recently, but uh, that's changing now, and I imagine some boats will probably run out there. I know the El Dorado likes to run out there on a rockfish trip. Um, at Santa Barbara, there's been some sea bass and halibut caught. Uh, I assume quite a few of the overnight boats are fishing there, and plenty of skiffs, but you know, if you're heading over there on your own boat, uh, you're going to need live squid or at least really good fresh dead squid. So I'd figure out that before you get over there in case you can't make any at the island. And um, if you're on a trip to Nick, I would also bring a rod, along a rod that might be appropriate for sea bass because you never know when those things are going to pop up out there. You know, those uh, if they bite at SPI, they often bite out at Nick as well. So just something to keep in mind if you're heading out on a shallow water rockfish trip or something like that. You never know. You guys might stumble into some of that action. Um, speaking of stumbling into action, set down to Clemente where the Thunderbird found her first game fish of the year with a really nice yellow they caught uh, the other day while fishing shallow before heading out to fish cod. You know that, um, there's plenty of fish around the island. There's squid at the island. I'm sure there's yellows there. It's just a matter of finding when they want to bite. Um, that may improve into the full moon as well. I don't know. Uh, we need these conditions to stabilize a little bit, get some more coverage over there, more boats looking. It's a big island for one or two boats to, to cover the whole thing. Um, I know some of my friends are going over the bass fishing this weekend. Probably be a good call, good option if you want to, you know, take advantage of some <clears throat> spring fishing over there, which is usually a lot better than it is anywhere else at this time of year. But, uh, yeah, if nothing else, you go out and load up on big cod if the bass or yellows aren't biting. And, um. Uh, I think the island's mostly open this weekend. The last I looked, it didn't seem like uh, too much closer, but I would definitely check before heading out if you're planning the trip. Let's go into Catalina. Um, most of the boats cat are still fishing cod, at least three quarter day boats, but the Pursuit uh, had a couple of yellows the other day, some real nice ones on squid. And uh, private boaters and the smaller uh, operations are getting some uh, sea bass and halibut as well over there. You know, it's a good, if you know what you're doing and you can get some squid, you got a good chance of getting a shot of the sea bass or halibut over a cat right now if you're a private boater. Haven't heard much about the bass, I'm assuming they're biting. I know the Bonita are biting, I saw that Vaughn Podmore of Salty Fly Guide Service was over there catching Bonita the other day in that same general area where they normally bite and that's usually, when those things are biting, the bass are usually biting as well. So, I don't know, I might uh, stretch my legs a little bit this weekend and run over there depending on what I have going on, but I might just end up fishing uh, fishing locally again. Uh, speaking of fishing locally, um, I ran a PB three times this week, um, fishing calicos, and each day was completely different conditions. Yeah, sorry about that. So anyway, each of the three days was different conditions, and well, the conditions I had a PB are not really important to you going fishing this weekend. It just kind of shows you uh, some scenarios that you might run into during the spring, and you know, the the biggest problem we had all three days, or two of the three days, was a distinct lack of current. And then on the second and third day, a problem we had was red tide. So that's common up and down the coast right now. So um, in a situation, if you're inshore fishing for calico bass, um, 
if you're in an area where there's no current or there's minimal current or the current's going in a bad direction, um, I would just give up on the kelp and go fish shallow uh, or shallower where the swell is engaging with rock because that creates water movement on its own and creates a feeding scenario even if there's no current happening. And that's kind of what we did on, uh, on Saturday was we ended up fishing shallow beaches and stuff like that. And we had pretty good fishing on both the small hard baits and like the DD100 and also on the Gulp 6 inch jerk shed on the owner 3 8 ounce uh, sled head or half ounce sled head. Uh, we probably had, I don't know, a bunch, mostly smaller fish, but it was a uh, good, a few nice ones mi mixed in like this one Chris got. But um, on Sunday I decided to go a little bit later because it was, uh, we had a good, good streak in the morning and then it really slowed down until midday and then we caught a few more fish. So Matt and I ran up there and uh, on Sunday afternoon and no current again, but now the red tide was moving in in the areas that were shallower. So our, our playing field got very condensed now because there was dirty water in the shallow areas and dirty water everywhere else. And we still did okay. I mean, we caught plenty of fish, got some nice ones on the crankbait, um, but it wasn't great fishing. So, you know, jump forward to Monday, decided to cut out of work early and head back up there. And as we we're driving up to the area we're fishing, we're not going very far. We're going, we're basically fishing from the Trump golf course down to Point Furman. Um, comp everything was completely red tided in. I mean, it was, uh, you couldn't even see the kelp two feet below the surface. Um, nothing looked good. And we struggled to scratch a few fish shallow in the morning or in the morning, the beginning of the trip, first hour or so. Um, and as I was moving between trips, the only turn I saw really all weekend, I only saw a handful. It, uh, one came down and actually dove in the kelp in uh, about 18 or 20 feet of water. And I actually, when I saw that turn, I noticed there was a cormorant there as well. Well, this current was actually running parallel to the uh, coast now. It was running uphill. This is the first current we'd had in days. And despite the dirty water, the bass were just loaded out there and biting. I mean, every we were getting doubles and a lot of fish. We had, I don't know, 50 plus fish and a couple hours of fishing out there, but the uh, the trick was not only just finding the area that had the current running parallel to the island, but finding a depth that these fish were holding. If you went out 10 feet deep or 10 feet shallow or 5 feet shallow, they weren't biting. I don't know why. Something was holding them in that depth range. And also you had to have baits that were um, appropriate for what we were doing. And, you know, this, this Again, this doesn't just talk about PV this weekend. This talks about anytime you're inshore fishing. So basically, um, what we dealt with, we had current, we had kelp, we had water that was 18 to 20 feet deep, and we had fish that were holding in the lower half of that call. Um, so due to the dirty water, the uh, Lucky Crab DD100 we'd been fishing before uh, wasn't working. It just didn't have a big enough profile or flash enough, bright enough to draw in these fish. Uh, I made a few casts with a uh, MC 7 inch split tail slug uh, on a lead head to see if I could get a bite tire to call them. No, they wouldn't want that. The fish were not responding. You know, I sank it down. They just showed no interest in it because I don't think they were seeing it. So what we were using was a, a big flashy crankbait. Um, sorry about this. Computer just shut off. Uh, we were fishing a bigger flashier crankbait and this was a, a, a bomber uh, fat free shad and you know this is not a these are crankbaits we've had hanging on the rack for years and never used and the only reason I grabbed them is because they have a big profile they are uh, uh, neutrally buoyant so they don't float or sink and I had swapped out the hooks previously with big owner hooks um, and when you're fishing crankbaits in the kelp you want big meaty hooks on there so this bit bait fits the profile big bulky bait dove to 12 to you know probably 10 to 12 feet of water bright colors, all these things that would attract these fish and get them to see it. Now, even with all that, we still had to figure out now the final part is how did the, will these fish bite this retrieve? And as it turned out, uh, it was a very long pause because these fish were hearing the bait, calling in on it, and then having trouble finding it. So if you just fish it normally through the, you know, cast and lane, fish it normally back, all the fish that we would see would be chasing the bait back to the boat or eating it right at the boat or just coming up and swimming away because they're having trouble locating that bait. So what we figured out is the bad figured out, make a long cast, burn the bait down, pause. Five or six quick turns, pause. Five or six quick turns, pause.
pause. And I'm saying pause like that because that's how long we're pausing. It's almost a ridiculous amount of pause. But you'll, you know, you take those wines, you sit there, and then bang, it'll just about rip the rod out of your hands. But if you wind it consistently or make a short pause, you're not going to get any bites at all. So wherever you're fishing inshore, there's going to be these components. Where are the fish? What's the visibility? What's the conditions around her? What type of lure? You know, this, this uh, fat free shad is a big wobble, real noisy bait. This place is a lot of water. Got those fish's attention, but then we realize also that we're, if you go too fast, they're not going to catch up to the bait. You're just going to follow it and not bite it. So these are all little bits and pieces you can put together um, as you go along there when you're, uh, when you're doing that. And it's, you know, it's not like we knew that one in from the start. We figured it out throughout the day. So these are things to uh, just keep in the back of your mind next time you're uh, doing some inshore fishing. But, uh, you know, let's, while we're inshore here, let's talk about the cod fishing. They're doing, having really good cod fishing along the beach on the half and three quarter day boats, but they are fishing very deep. So, I mean, they're fishing 600 feet of water, up to 600 feet of water, I would say. So, you see a lot of these big cod they're getting. There's a lot of delicious cod, like uh, chilies and bank perch and floridas and all that stuff, but um, you gotta fish deep to catch them. So if you're planning to go on one of those trips, you know, I, I recommend a, a reel full of 30 pound braid, 24 ounce torpedo sinker, a couple of circle hooks, you'll have no trouble getting down and you'll have plenty of line on your reel if you get the, uh, the reel I mentioned a few weeks ago. But uh, yeah, that's probably gonna be a good, good option as well this weekend. And you know, if you uh, wanna do some coastal cotting on your own boat, you know, just look for areas in a depth range and you just need to get out there and mow the lawn on your fish monitor and look. And when you see stuff on the meter, drop on it. See what, see what you come up with. Eventually, you'll figure out a pattern. You'll be able to go out and pretty consistently uh, catch some fish. Um, finally, head down to San Diego. You know, those tuna are still biting. Some really good scores. There's a couple different grades of fish down there. There's the real big fish they're getting at night. And that's on the day and a half multi-day trips, you know, all 100-pound plus fish. Mostly on knife jigs, pretty much all on, on knife jigs. Um, and then there's the ones they're catching during the day where they're getting some nicer ones, but I'd say that most of those are school size fish, smaller, I'd say less than 50 pounds, probably less than 30 pounds. Uh, but those are biting fly line baits, jigs, uh, little cold snipers, stuff like that. There's yellows on patties down there and everything. But um, these fish aren't really up and foaming around right now. You can probably go down and drag your, what do you call it, uh, mad back till you blew in the face to catch one. But uh, there's, you know, I was thinking about going down, but there's not really enough service activity to make it worth my while to go down because I'm not going to just, you know, if you're on a skip, you need to see something to cast at. But um, I'm hoping as we come into this full moon, maybe these fish will change their behavior. They sometimes will do that on the moon historically over the last few years. And if not, as the water continues to warm, maybe they'll continue to feed higher in the column. Um, regarding, you know, water temps and stuff like that. I looked at the SST and the chlorophyll charts and where those fish are, they're up to just below the border in a few different areas, but the water above that, they're in a very distinctive area of water and the water up above that, there's no conclusive place to go and look for those fish. And I would love to run out of Newport and go down towards 43 or the corner and go find some fish. But if you take a look at the SST chart or chlorophyll chart this week, you'll see that there's a it would absolutely be a needle in a haystack because there's, there's nothing to orient, orient you to right now. So if you have any big aspirations of uh, looking for tuna in U.S. waters, you're, I'd expect to do a whole lot of driving from bank to bank as opposed to uh, going and looking at a, a break or temper color break. But uh, yeah, you know, it's, it bodes well. It's April and April, tuna are biting, three-quarter day boats are or full day boats, whatever they call them there, getting on them. I think the San Diego had like 30 fish today. Today's Wednesday. Um, just fun fishing, and I'm, I think it's going to get better. You know, and eventually we'll have some yellows moving back into the Coronados once that water cleans up down there a bit, I think. And, uh, you know, I, the, with the amount of bass I've seen at Palace Breweries this year, I think it's just going to be a good year of fishing in general. There's a ton of bait here all winter. Uh, the water is rebounding. We even caught a couple of short barracuda up there the other day. So, uh, I'm hoping it's going to be a good year and, uh, you know, we're just on the beginning end of it. It's good, you know, it's for the first time I saw a ton of boats out on the weekend and uh, it's just great to see people, see people, out, the, people out there fishing. And remember, if you guys are heading out, get your fishing license. I got stopped by Fishing Game the other day and thankfully they were uh, just friendly and uh, wished us luck. But uh, remember, if you're heading out on your own boat or a sport boat, you don't want to go out without it. But uh, I guess that's about it this week. But uh, good luck with your fishing. I'll talk to you next week.